All right, we're gonna take a look at how things move when you drop them when there's uh, air friction or drag on them. Um, we'll use a real simple model for drag force that it's, um, it's proportional to, just proportional to the velocity. It's what's called linear drag. Um, so the idea is that you just drop something and we're actually gonna let it fall with, um, but with this kind of a drag force acting on it. So when you first let it go, um, all that's gonna be happening or all that's acting on it up here is there's gonna be the, um, the force of gravity downwards or mg uh, acting down um, on this thing. There hasn't, the thing's not moving yet, so there's, the drag force hasn't really developed it, uh, yet at this point. Um, well, as the thing continues to fall, of course, gravity will continue to act on it, and um, we'll just have this thing moving in uniform gravity field. So the, the weight of this thing um, won't really change if you're near, as long as you stay near the surface of the Earth on the way down. So this downward force will be constant. Um, the pushing back on this thing, though, at this point in the motion, there'll be like this itty bitty backward force of uh, drag, VV. Um, pushing back. It's moving slowly still at this point though, so it hasn't really had a chance for this force to develop. Now as that falls, that, um, that force is going to grow, and eventually you get to where it grows where it's the same size as mg. Um, well, if, if these forces balance, then the net force is zero, and so the thing shouldn't gain any more speed. So it should stay at that speed at the speed that it is, at the moment that those two become equal, it will stay there. So, so the speed will build up to a, to a what's called terminal velocity, terminal speed, and then it'll continue to fall at that speed. Um, so VV. So if we graph what's happening with the speed, right, when you first let it go, uh, it doesn't have any, um, any speed. And then it, um, so it starts to pick up, it starts to pick up speed, right? And then eventually that speed is going to, tap out or level out at what's called VT, V-terminal. A um, couple things about this. Before, right when you let it go, the force hasn't, the friction force, air drag force, hasn't had a chance to grow. And so it's, it's the only force on it is mg. That means it's downward acceleration um, is, is actually going to be g or 9.8. Um, so the slope here, this initial slope, um, it starts out with a slope of g or 9.8 you know 9.8 meter per second squared i'm just going to call it g um, if you graph the um, acceleration right which is the slope of the velocity you can see the acceleration or the slope starts at g and then it just tends towards zero um, so you start up here at g and then the acceleration just tends towards zero like this right so we can see that that's going to come um, and then likewise on um, position versus time, well, it starts off falling um, like a you know drop projectile with no drag. So the, the position starts kind of growing quadratically. But then instead of growing quadratically forever, what it's going to do is approach a slope. It's going to approach a slope of VT. So it doesn't keep continuously getting steeper and steeper but we're going to approach slope of vt here, of v terminal, all right? Um, pretty easy to figure out what the terminal velocity is. When these balance, um, then you're going to be at the terminal velocity. So that balance is going to happen when there's no net force or when bv equals bv terminal equals mg. And so then what we can do actually then is say that the v terminal is mg over b. Right? So um, that's kind of how you get an idea of like the, the limiting behavior, kind of beginning behavior, ending behavior. Um, but what we want to do is let's actually figure out, say, the, the actual equation for the velocity as a function of time. Um, and then from that, um, we'll get the acceleration as a function of time. And then if you felt like it, you could, you could integrate this and get the position as a function of time. Um, so let's just do it. If you want to learn how something's going to move, as usual, you'll start with like f equals ma to see how it's going to move. So the sum of the forces is ma. Well, as this thing's falling down, what we'll have is, let's take positive direction to be down actually, since that's which way it's going. Um, we'll say we have mg in the positive direction and bv is in the negative direction. Um, and then that's going to be equal to ma. 
Um, what we'll do here is we'll just set a goal of getting, let's just get V of T. So velocity is a function of time. Right. Now the issue you have here is the velocity is changing with time, but so is the acceleration. So we basically have two variables that are changing with time. Um, so it would be nice if we could kind of write this in terms of like one, one particular variable. And so, well, thankfully, you know, your acceleration and velocity are related. And so what you do is you make the substitution here that, you know, that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, dv dt. So let's make that substitution, mg minus bv equals m dv dt. This is what's called the differential equation. So the solutions to these things are functions v of t, right? And we already know that we're headed towards something that's going to be, needs to be shaped like this. So we know kind of where we're headed. Um, so we, we, the solution to this thing should basically be this function. Um, but we got to figure out what the heck the function is. So there's a few different ways to approach um, solving this. Um, you'll kind of have your own little style. Um, my style here, and again, this is pure style, uh, optional move is when I'm solving for the V, um, I like to just clear the coefficient on the V. Um, so what I'm going to do is divide everything by minus B um, on both sides. I'll just write a little note about what I'm doing here. I'm going to divide by minus B now at that, at that step, just to clear the coefficient on the thing that I want. So you get minus mg over B plus B, because I divided by minus B, equals, um, again, divide by minus B, so it's minus m over B, because I divided by minus B, dv dt. You could, if you wanted here, you notice V terminal um, is mg minus B. So you could you could actually make that substitution here if you felt like it, because that's just the constant. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to do that. I'll just leave it like this for now. Um, so now what we need to do is, it's a technique that's called separate and integrate. So what you want to do is get Vs on one side and Ts on the other so you can integrate this thing. Um, different ways to do it, again, matter of style. What I like to do, and, and I used to screw this up as a, a like undergrad all, all the time. Um, but what I like what I like to do is just just bring the whole this whole thing under the dv and bring everything else over to the left. So in other words, let's just bring this entire mess on the left under the dv. So you'll get dv over. Just bring this whole freaking thing under. So you'll get v minus mg over b here. And then over here you'll get what minus b over m dt. So we've successfully separated it because you don't have a mixture of V's and T's on either side. They're separated. Um, so we're good to go to integrate it. So what you do is we're going to integrate it. We'll go from where we start our stopwatch to, where, to some arbitrary time where we stop it. And here we'll go from where, however fast we start the thing dropping. So if we had thrown it down initially, you would actually put an initial velocity here. But well, we're just starting it at v equals zero, v initial equals zero, and we'll go to some arbitrary v final, okay? And so we're almost there, so let's do this. Uh, pretty simple integral, minus b over m times integral dt, so that just integrates to t, and then evaluate it at t minus zero. So this left side's pretty easy, it's just minus b over mt. This side you gotta pay attention, um, cause you gotta actually think about using the, you actually gotta pay attention with the limits here. You can, it's easy to screw this up. So what this is gonna be is, it's a, um, the, this integrates to log of this stuff, right? Log absolute value of that stuff, uh, V minus mg over B. Evaluated though at zero and V. Now you don't wanna be lazy here cause you still have something there even when you plug in zero. So, so don't just be lazy and leave it like this. Um, what else did I say? Oh, um, where I saved us some trouble by clearing the coefficient on the V is when you did this integral here, you'd still have a coefficient hanging out. So you'd have to not screw that up. Um, so that's part of why I just like to clear the coefficient. That's just easy. Um, so then, uh, so let's do this. So you get minus V over MT uh, equals, and then you're going to get log of this thing evaluated at v minus the log of the thing at zero. Well, if you do log of a thing minus log of a thing, that's, that's a log of the first thing divided by the second thing. 
Um, so what this will then be is log of this thing evaluated at v, so it's going to be v minus mg over b, um, over this thing evaluated at zero, at zero um, so over minus mg over b. Okay? Because, right, it's log of the thing evaluated at b minus log of the thing evaluated at zero. So it's just saying that log A minus log B is log A over B. That's what, that's what this is. Um, so we're almost there now. We just got to solve for this. We just got to extract this V. Um, so exponentiate both sides, or as the students at my school say, is they say E it. Um, I'm going to switch to red just so I don't have to erase too much. So exponentiate the left-hand side. You'll get uh, E to the minus B over MT. That's on the left. Uh, on the right, exponentiation removes the log, right? So you'll get, you basically just get this stuff. V minus mg over B divided by minus mg over B. Um, if you'll forgive me, I'm going to do two algebra moves at once here. Multiply the minus mg over B there, so that would be kind of a coefficient in the front of this thing, and then add to that mg over B. So uh, when the smoke clears, you'll get you'll have V over here on the right hand side and you'll have MG over B minus MG over B even minus B over MT. Hopefully you won't get too annoyed at me, but again, where this coefficient came from, that's from multiplying this over and then you add this one over and that's this one. Um, and so this, let's check if this works, this should be it. Um, let's, let's check this. Well, if I plug in t equals like infinity, if I wait a super long time, then e to the minus infinity is zero. And so it's like, oh wow, at t equals infinity, this does approach mg over b. If I plug in t equals zero, e to the zero is one. So I get mg over b minus mg over b, which is zero. So at t equals zero, this thing actually does start at zero. So this is it. Um, one last thing I think I'll just show you here, uh, or maybe I'll show you two more things, is if you can factor out this mg over b, of course, which is b terminal, and you get this, 1 minus e to minus b over mt. Just get used to seeing this. Anytime you see an exponential approach to something, um, your coefficient will be the thing it approaches, and you'll get 1 minus like an exponential factor. So you see, you see that happen a lot. Um, maybe very last thing I'll leave you with, just since it only takes a second here, is if we go back to this expression, we can quick get A by taking the derivative of this monster. So if I take the derivative of this thing, well, the first term is just a constant, so nothing there. If I take the derivative of this, I gotta bring the minus B over M down in front. Um, so you'll get uh, minus B over M times M over B. So you'll basically get G e to the minus b over mt if you take the derivative of this uh, of this expression um, and you notice that makes a lot of sense you start at g and so this thing just goes like g e to the minus b over mt um, so you can see that this worked pretty well um, and then if you want to get the position as a function of time of course you just got to integrate this thing um, so that's how you handle uh, falling with uh, with air drag hope you learned a little something <laughs>